Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode Agent 47. Episode 47. Um, to the, I know, that's a bad joke. To the dude, to the Dudes Watch a Movie podcast. I am the host of this podcast, James Wick, joined by Ginger Wick and our trusted host of the Continental Hotel, Jaboy Wick. Is that what we decided on? I was going to Did we decide on Jaboy? You had no other way to get the J in there. Well, that's why I mean the Continental host. He's just Lance. Lance. Oh, that's right. I why did I not think of that? That actor's name is Lance. Hey, that actor's name is Lance. I, I forgot to bring that up. I totally intentionally did that. Um, that being said, well, we have watched John Wick. If you didn't get that through the first five minutes there, that's probably not been five minutes. But in honor of the third film that's coming out in a day or two, which we hope to see rather soon, shortly, soon, day or two. This is what happens when you don't write it down. Oh, yeah, your brain noticed. gets on nine topics at once. It I sucks. I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. I'm with you. This is the longest I'm intro we've done. Mine. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that being said, we'll talk about wet blanket endings, movies with little dialogue, and what makes a good revenge film. Roll that B-roll. We don't have B-roll. People keep asking. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Holy cow. I have a terrible acting career. Don't hire me for an actor. All right. So, John Wick came out October 24th, 2014. Rated R. Um, directed by Chad Stahelski and David Leitich, who was uncredited. I probably said his name incorrectly. I, I apologize. Um, the writer was Derek Kolstad. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the main details on that one. Um, we'll throw out the next topic I have on my list. Um, taglines. Mm -hmm. You do trailer thoughts? I mean, do, you do that first, or do, do we normally? I mean, we, we don't write this down. Seen. I have so. a format. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, we, we've kind of not listened to you though. Yeah. Uh, so here's the deal. I feel like we all seen this movie, so it's just a matter at this point of does the trailer properly indicate what the movie is? I said this since we started doing trailer thoughts. This is the first one that actually like. You know exactly what it is. That's revenge that's film. That's what I was thinking. He's coming after the kid. He's coming. He's thought he was out, but now I'm back in. That that mafiosa. It's Godfather too. I yeah. didn't get the greediness out of it though, because they had that rockabilly rock style going I mean, on. They do it, a decent amount of like violence in the trailer. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah no, yeah, but I mean like a lot of that darkness, I suppose, behind it. But maybe mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's whatever. I honestly had never seen the trailer. When I first saw it, all I heard was from my mom's friend, oddly enough, that we should see the movie. And I was like, cool, I'll go see the movie. And I liked the film. But yeah, overall, after watching the trailer, after watching the film, it doesn't help much. It just, it's, it, it does its job. I would, I would say that it gives away a little too much. How so? Well, having, having watched the movie, we'll go into spoilers, but you see him fighting someone. So once you see that character in the movie, you're like, oh, oh yeah. they're going to fight because gotcha. I saw it in the trailer. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. That so once sense. that character shows up, there's really no like mystery behind mm -hmm. it. When did they start doing that thing? I don't know if they did it in the trailer, but where they started putting stuff in the trailer that doesn't actually exist in the film. Uh, the earliest one I can think of doing it, at least in my memory, was Talladega Nights. Really? There's a bunch of stuff in Talladega Nights trailer that's not in the movie, mm. but I think that makes sense for comedy because you can do so many different takes and so many different tries and stuff. But I know the like the Marvel is one of the bigger ones that does that now. Didn't they do that with Rogue One? When I Forrest Whitaker's remember. like, "What have you become, or will you become?" Does he not say that? I don't movie? think he says it in the movie at all because I was waiting for it. I was mm. waiting for it. <laughs> well, with with Marvel, a lot of it is same uh, owners. Like they own everything now. Mm. That's true. Uh, a lot of it's like we don't want to give away what's in the movie. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Endgame had a lot of Hulk in it. Yep, mm -hmm. Hulk's nowhere in that movie. Mm. Right, unfortunately. Well, beginning, but Infinity Wars. I'm sorry. That's yeah. A... yeah, yeah. I've been I've been switching yep. those. Yep, I do it too. All the sorry, time. yeah. But the, uh, the scene of more. them running in the field, like, and Hulk's there, but in the movie he's in the Hulk Buster. Yeah. yeah. Or or we've seen. Uh, no, I'm not gonna. No, I won't do it. Maybe later. <laughs> We're still somewhat in spoiler yeah. territory, so yeah. true. Do we want to go taglines now? Is it my, is it that yeah, we'll is do taglines. Yay! We'll make the baby happy. Give him another bottle. Uh -huh. Baby want ba ba. <laughs> so what do you got, Lance? <laughs> Other than some bouncing titties. Mm, 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 mm. Oh boy. Uh, I got, I got. You know, thought I was out, and they pulled me back in. Mm. Or alternatively, 
Oh. No! Oh, <laughs> sorry. I told you not to take mine. That was mine. You didn't tell me what it was, though. It's so. O, period. Okay, there you go. Mine's dead. Mine's just O. O. Mine is uh, Extreme Pet Ownership. Oh, mm. nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. The actual tagline, John Wick isn't the boogeyman. He's the guy you sent to kill. The fucking boogeyman. Stars. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say actual stars, 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 stars. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. a that's a Asterisk. bold maneuver if they went the other way. <laughs> so, plot of the film, real quick. I mean, do you want... Okay. Oh, I was going to say, an ex-hitman comes out of retirement to track down the gangsters that killed his dog and took everything from him. Done. Easy peasy. Starring? Starring John Wick. No. Um, Kiana Cool Breeze Over the Mountains Reeves. Oh, we're back to these. Well, no. Fun fact about that one. In Hawaiian, Kiano means cool breeze over the mountains. So that's why I threw that in. I, I didn't come with the clever ones, I know. I should take the time to do that because I do research on mine before the actual film. Um, uh, and then we also have Michael Nyquist, who plays Vigo. Rest in peace, good man. Died in 2017. Um, Alfie Allen as Isof Tarasov, William Defoe as Marcus, Dean Winters as Abby, Adrian Palacki as Miss Perkins, Omar Barana as Georgie. I don't know if any of these other ones He's are super. He's missing some of the big ones. Lance he? Reddick, hotel manager or Sharon. <clears throat> um, John Leguizamo. There's one of them. As uh, I, I, mm, A-U-R-E. It was Rio. Was Rio. Mm. Toby Leonard Moore as Victor. Also, Toby Moore. Boy, there's just... Still missing one, isn't he? Mm, mm. I mean, I, I mean, keep going, but... I, I think Ian McShane's what we're looking for. Yeah. yeah He's not are. listed on there. <gasps> How's he oh, not listed? They. How's he not listed? He's the he man not? who runs the Continental. Mm, mm. Just saying. Mm. For some reason, yes. he wasn't listed in the cast on IMDb. Mm. I'm lying. He says Ian McShane right there. There it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm looking at it right now. He's, Ray so he's, can't trust so him. He's, he's fourth on the bottom of the list, though. Can't trust him. <sighs> anyway, no. onward to the details here. We got the box office details budgeted of estimated guess. $15 million. Close. Higher or lower? Higher. $20 million. Nice. That is estimated. Yes, opening weekend made $14 million in October and then Gross USA did 43, easily dubbed it, dubbed it, mm. budget. And I feel like this is a movie that uh, picked up way more steam once it was put on like home media and everyone was like, word of mouth started traveling, like, you gotta see this movie. It's, it's strange how it didn't, I mean, I'm curious as to why it didn't blow up right away. So I think it would be Keanu being the main star. Because, I mean, he's a, he is a big name, but... He's not he's, a seat filler. He's, he's a peaks and valley kind of person. Mm. Like he is a seat filler. Like The Matrix did super well, and like Point Break and stuff in the '90s. But like he, he goes through periods of popularity, and I think this was kind of his reintroduction into like, oh man, it's Keanu. We gotta see it because I mean, if I think about movies he was in before this, there's the Shitty Lake House movie and some other shitty movie. With uh, Jack Nicholson, I think. I don't fucking know. That's that's, that's my point. I don't need Peaks even and valleys. Yeah. Fair enough. Lofts and troughs. <laughs> what makes a good revenge film? That's what we're going for today on this first topic of discussion. Totally on the first take, too. I know. Mm -hmm. um, so first off, like I was telling them earlier, before all the ramble, um, this topic is extremely hard to research because the stupid fucking film Revenge came out. It's not a stupid film. Apparently it got really good ratings, but it's hard to uh, research what makes a good revenge film when all I'm getting is revenge film details. But so, was your Google results revenge is a good film? Um, there was actually a lot of good positive reviews about it, but it was like it's a foreign rape revenge film, mm. and I was like, ooh, that has nothing to do with what I want to talk about. Would, mm. would you rather have that on your search history or looking up Secret Hitman Underground? Well, I probably wouldn't be able to find anything on that other than a lot of probably BS topics of, I used to be a hitman, but not really. They called me the ice man. Isn't it one of those fight club rules? You called don't talk about being beak. a hitman? Uh, plenty of people have talked about being a hitman, like Iceman has a book about it. Iceman. You gotta, uh, it's, it, don't worry about it. Okay. Anyway, so I brought down a few examples on there. I've got the Kill Bill series, mm -hmm. The Crow, Man mm -hmm. on Fire, Taken, Princess Bride Gangs, New York, and Django Unchained, to name a few. 
old boy. I saw the devil. There's a lot. Some oh, of those, yeah. some of those fit together. Some don't. Yeah, no. One it of these just, things is not like the other. It was just on the top yeah. 50 list of best revenge films. Yeah. yeah, I mean, most of those were violent, but then you also had like Hold on. <laughs> Kill Bill in there. <laughs> Hold on, that'll be my topic here. I said typically the need for revenge film, one would assume a plot against someone who's wronged you needs to be present, along with the means to take action against whatever means necessary. That's my assumption, so I couldn't find a detailed summary. Means necessary. It's, a, it's a very broad. I know. I, just, I couldn't find broad. anything, surprisingly. Um, so then my questions to you, um, what would you cons- or would you consider John Wick to be a revenge yes. film? Why or yeah. why not? Absolutely. Yes. Like what qualifies as it's all just one, it's just a general question. It's not a trick question. I'm, yeah, we're answering it. Yes. This this I would say fits more into the genre of revenge film than something like Princess Bride. Which, yes, you could easily call that a revenge film, mm-hmm. but it's not the same yeah. as John Wick. Revenge film has Kill a connotation Bill. to yeah. it. Yeah. You expect a lot of violence in that, yeah. whereas that is more of an adventure story that happens with a evolve. revenge yeah. as as a plot detail. Yeah. Would that be, again, one of those bastardizing the term to fit the general? Eh, not so much on that one. I think it's just... I mean... You, you wouldn't see Princess Bride in the revenge film section right. at your local blockbuster. Yeah. It's True. like you can fit it in there, but that it's definitely a comedy. Yeah, m- yeah. more of an adventure fantasy comedy. That's fair. Right. Um, it, it, it'd be like putting Ghostbuster in a horror section. Yes, there are ghosts <laughs> in it, <laughs> but it's not a horror movie. Not Correct. technically yeah. horror. It's I not guess. a horror movie. It's not. Do not Christmas argue with movie. me. We're going to have Don't. to, one of these times we're going to make like a top five, it's not one of those movies list from <laughs> you. So far we've got your Christmas and horror movies. I've had that argument with someone. You start, you start collecting them, and we'll roll one time. Just let you go. Will, I mean, with that one movie we watched, can be considered a, a horror movie, Bloodfest. Yeah, yeah. Or is it it, an see, again, comedy? that's more that's more comedy mm-hmm. with horror elements mm-hmm. rather than horror with comedy elements. But a big element of modern horror is gore, which that does versus. Uh, it's all about where the the scale is balanced mm-hmm. out. I think it's on the spectrum. Other. Whether or not it's a comedy horror or horror comedy. Yeah. So uh, revenge. This is like what you would think of a revenge film. That. He was out. Uh, he gets pulled back in unintentionally. All he wants to do is is, is kill fucking Theon for killing his dog. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's all he, he wants. Though. And everyone is just in his goddamn way. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's one way to put it. Yeah. And it's it's also a matter of, I guess, motivation and persistence is what I always look at for a revenge movie. Because, I mean, you can... You can have like a, a movie where someone's done something and you're going to retaliate, but mm-hmm. it's the matter of how far you're going to take it and how much, not only physical, but mental and other sort of anguish you want to put on the other person. Like whether or not you're going to torture them, whether or not you want to like have a moment beforehand to let them know what you're about to do to them. Uh, and this movie where he burns all their stuff, just A, he knows it'll bring them out of their hiding, but B, he knows that will hurt the family more than anything else. That, that kind of ties in later to what I want to bring up. Just just remember that. Okay. Um, then my other last question, what do you think takes to make a good revenge film? And it's just not for the sake of shock and awe, other than obviously a revengeful plot. Mm. Do you have a few that I haven't named? It's, and why do you would say that they're Basically good? what you just said. The most persistence. important thing is the motivation, I think. Yeah. It's got to be something that you, the viewer, sees and is now fully on board with that character enacting that revenge no matter how far they take it. So, so Kill Bill, getting behind the characters. Yeah, Kill Bill, you get murdered at your own wedding. You want to get shot at your own wedding. This mm-hmm. uh, cancer wife gives dog, and then you kill dog. That's, I mean, I'm behind which already him already just for the dog thing, right? You <laughs> add in the, the wife's extra mm-hmm. on that's icing on the cake at that point, yeah. right? We're already cheering for, for him to kill the fucker because mm-hmm. he killed the dog. Mm-hmm. You even kick a dog, he want to kill you. Django, slave coming back in, slave owners. They're all like really awful things that happens that is uni- like it's not universally i guess there's probably a subsect of america that would see django and be like yeah yeah he there. <laughs> uh, they're even in the movie and they've got bad hats on they can't see what these damn things on <laughs> i appreciate what your wife did yes I um, see shit. uh i think i think motivation has to be the most important thing in a, in a movie about revenge have either of you seen uh law-abiding citizen Yes. Gerard mm-hmm. Butler. I actually really scale, like yeah. that movie. That is a great revenge movie. And they do the great thing where you're completely with him all the way through. Mm-hmm. So guys break in, kill his wife in front of him. 
uh, the lawyer, uh, Jamie Foxx, yes. uh, takes an acquittal. So one guy goes free, one guy goes to prison. Gerard Butler's like, screw that, I'm hunting them down. And you're with him the entire way. He's killing the DEA, he's killing the mayor, judges. You're with him the entire way. He's a tactician. Until the very end. And that's when he stops being the protagonist and becomes the antagonist. Mm. Heisenberg right? himself. Yeah. Kind of basically. Now you're no longer with him, and that's why he loses. Doesn't his family so, get like raped and murdered, or is it just murdered? Roots. Uh, it's either one of the two. In the very beginning, like he gets oh, tied and up that, and his wife and yeah, blah blah. So, uh, yeah, pretty sure. Now his wife does. I don't know about the daughter, mm. but I'm sure that's what I was like implied. Mm-hmm. Punisher is also a revenge story. Mm. The movie, not necessarily the comics, but kind of both. Kind of the same. Yeah, it depends on which which kind of Punisher you're reading, whether or not yeah. he's a good guy. Or so would that be a lot of anti-hero films then? I, mean, I think you have to be an anti-hero to do a revenge movie yeah. properly. Yeah, and act like chaotic good. Yeah, most likely. Uh, like that. But so now I pose the question: Is the villain more important in the revenge plot than the hero? Because the villain is the one that does the act that then makes us root for the hero. I'd say so, because, I mean, you have to have a formidable foe to go against. Right. It can't be just some Joe Schmo. You got to have, like, the John Candy, or is that his name? Not John, John Candy. Candy. <laughs> uh, Candy, the uh, Candy Ranch guy from fucking Django Unchained. His last uh, name's never. Candy. Oh. Yeah. You got to have that character, like, it can't just be, like, a dickhead. He's got to be, like, someone, almost like a likable dickhead, like someone you, it's fun to hate, like, uh, uh, Vigo in this, like mm-hmm. he's charismatic. That's the key. They got to be charismatic to make you want to see that that interaction. I agree. Agreed. Yeah. Mm. Hard what, are, what, what would you say are some yeah. of your favorite? Like, give if you if you had to pick one. What favorite? What revenge film? Mm, can I cheat? Can't be a series. Can it be two? Have to pick one. <laughs> well, let's see. That doesn't work because what if the rules? What if one. I what if I want to pick Kill Bill, just but you don't get to see it until the second one? Just one. I'm saying Kill Bill, and I'm saying okay. that they're the same. It's both parts together because if you just do Kill Bill one or Kill Bill two, you don't see the full arc of the. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to bend the rules. Well, you know, but you you put dumb rules in. <laughs> you know, I really don't have favorites. Of things, the things that I enjoy, but I can't really like. I suppose then, if you were to say, "Hey, them. what's a good revenge film? What's a first film that would come to your mind?" Yeah. Uh, Is it John Wick? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I I heard so much good stuff about John Wick. How it's so amazing. It's all right. It's not the greatest movie ever, right? I was expecting a bit more out of the. We need to have a sidebar real quick. <laughs> yes. Listen, all I'm saying is... I think is, we kick Lance off the show. <laughs> why are there so many guns? You don't need so many guns, okay? Why can't we just have some... <laughs> have you seen... Anyone guns? else watch the last episode right now? <laughs> I can't do that with a straight face. <laughs> you know what? I think uh, I think part of the, the power of this movie, though, was the amount of people that went in without expectation and i think that's why mm. it played so well because mm. you don't you don't expect anything of it and then that's when it starts hitting he's like oh shit! i do oh, want to see the sequels now because mm. I, I feel like he's gonna get better as he goes along like keanu doesn't have a great range i see what he's trying to do but but he's just not quite hitting those there's a couple scenes where he where he does okay the only one i'm thinking of is when uh, Vigo has him tied up in the chair, mm. and he says, "That's why God took your wife from you." And I was like, mm, "He looks mad and sad right now." <laughs> but yeah, the, the the big thing I'm thinking he's might be what you're thinking, yeah. where he's like, "Vigo will kill me." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's <laughs> wolves. Yeah, wolves. <laughs> no, I mean just just throughout the entire, entire the first like half of the movie, you, know, you stole John Wick's car, sir. Oh, oh. Well, I, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying mm-hmm. to set up like. Oh, build up the mysteriousness oh, shit. behind who yeah. he really is. Jo- jo- that John Wick, <laughs> and they they do a good job at that. They do because I, because I recognize what they're doing, right? But what I'm seeing doesn't quite match. Maybe I'm jaded, and I'm just a, a that spoiled kinda, fuck. That kind of brings <laughs> me to what I wanted to talk about was, uh, I guess I phrased it wrong. Movies with little dialogue, more of movies showing not telling, is kind of the big thing that I remember initially liking about this movie, as opposed to. Uh, John Wick 2, and we have yet to see number 3, but I like how easy this story is, how simple the story is, and how much of it they do in the way that only video or video game 
media can tell a story mm -hmm. like the entire what is it uh the bit with john's wife at the beginning they show you the entire story of her issues without any dialogue really uh john drifting at the airport no dialogue there but you can kind of get the sense of what's going on there and then when the puppy's dead and he's like burying it all no dialogue they don't have to tell you how he's feeling they don't have anyone coming in saying oh it sucks that your wife died of cancer they do then say it later but it's in an antagonizing way things mm -hmm. like that but i just feel like mm, i appreciate when movies can stand on their own merit as a visual medium yeah, as opposed to a lot of uh constantly mm -hmm. push exposition at you via dialogue exposition, that's what I, was I, I do love uh, as he's laying there with the cgi dead dog and then uh, it cuts to him like cleaning stuff up and then just a hard cut sound goes out mm -hmm. digs the shovel in that was good and that, it's, that, that, that that's the strong point it lets it breathe too like it gives you time to digest what you're seeing and then connect the dots right before it goes to the next scene or the next shot mm -hmm. and so it I think that's one of the things that they did best in this movie. Um, I feel like John should have a better security system. As he, a man who's killed a lot of people. John is the security system. Yeah. Apparently not. You're supposed to just think Did you not watch him like, take oh. out the whole mercenary team? <laughs> Afterwards. So here, after he gets jumped by three punks. I will tell you where the split happens. Hair goes back. It's business time. <laughs> that's that's when that's when he's back. That's the visual transformation. He puts in the pomade. He 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 puts the suit on. It's mm. business suit time. Um, the last suit you'll ever wear. The last movie that we watched that I think actually honestly does a better job of pulling you in with zero dialogue would have been uh, There Will Be Blood. Ooh. First twenty minutes, no dialogue, but you're with that character the entire time and you know exactly what's happening. And you're like, there's something about also the contrast, the dynamic going on where at the beginning is. It's fairly quiet, and then it just kind of, you'll hit some peaks of, like, loud things coming in that drops back down to quiet. It's, it's pacing is really, really I think good. not only just to set the, the, the tone, but also to set the scene, because mm -hmm. he's basically out in the middle of nowhere, which in the middle of nowhere typically is pretty quiet. And he's just by himself, and so it really, you don't have to know where he's at. You can basically hear where he's right. at. Right. And it, I mean... I guess that to me is this the true sign of a good filmmaker someone that a i guess part of filmmaking is storytelling mm -hmm. but there's like i don't think i could sit through a silent michael bay movie <laughs> there'd just be explosions with no sounds and i uh, like but you'd have to play some uh, gary jewels in the back like uh oh, fuck now i'm having a brain fart i'm just thinking about mad world <laughs> <laughs> uh but like kubrick uh, the Shining has a lot of just like drawn out silent scenes. Oh yeah, and I just feel like it gives you time to just survey everything that's happening within the frame and gives you a chance to actually appreciate what's happening versus constant cut, constant cut, constant Without cut, ramp it up uh, action. Yeah, sensory overload. Essentially. Right. Yeah, like Mandy was sensory overload. Oh There's my god, so much going on, and I think Mandy wishes it was this movie. Like in the color scheme and the, the story, like the way it starts out super suppose, fucking yeah. slow and it's them not saying a whole lot and then it just Mandy goes reminds off the rails. Me if you're film editing and you take the contrast and just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything about it. But maybe that's what they're going for. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Any other... I don't know if you guys have any other examples of those style of movies or not. I mean... Like, uh, just like ones that do the majority of it's... Dunkirk. Oh, yeah. That yeah. did it really well. Mm -hmm. But it was more of a tension building than anything because they were using yeah. whatever that, that the oh, music the is. The airplanes that, going overhead, too. Or the music that just constantly builds and builds mm -hmm. and builds and there were peaks and then the ticking of the clock. Yep. <sighs> but I think they did that more with score, not yeah. necessarily with... But they were able to kind of get a point across without someone the whole time like, Oh, fuck, man. Oh, fuck. They're coming. Oh, fuck. Right? Yeah. And I think it's I think it's refreshing just to have every now and then see the other side of what a movie can be, mm. and I think that's part of what this movie did so well is it mashed those worlds together, because it does eventually at some point just go into like fuck it we're shooting everyone mode, and at that point you're ready for it like mm. yeah yeah shoot them all shoot them all climax yeah. Uh, Do you have uh, double, tap, <laughs> double tapping people in the skull, yeah. wasting ammunition. He's mm. already dead, John. Well, he's on a revenge kick, you know. He wants them <laughs> he's to on be that dead. High. Yeah. Uh, Big muscly dude shoots him, what, three times in the body, one time in the head after stomping him on his foot. <laughs> and stabbing him in the chest. Mm -hmm. I mean, also no bullet holes in that guy. I mean, magic, well, magic bullet theory. 
I mean, I feel like maybe if it, well, no, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> there I, haven't, are, I don't shoot people, so I couldn't tell you. There are some scenes where the CGI just doesn't quite hold up, mm. yeah, especially when you're of, up and close person and you shoot. My it's particular like one is mm. the puppy, and maybe some of the blood splatter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I man, that's, that's a little nitpick though. Yeah, it, it didn't really it doesn't take away much. from the whole. Yeah, experience. still, still, still a good movie. Yeah, uh, the choreographing seems a little strong. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know what style of the fighting he's gun, using. Gun kung fu. Gun, gun, gun kata. Gun fu. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on uh, which like scene you're talking about, because like just just any of them really. He a seems lot of to it's jujitsu and judo. Yeah, it, he just seems to always know where someone is and mm-hmm. in turn pop pop. Yep. It's cool to watch. Yep. But you're like right, he's really good. See, <laughs> that's that's one of the things I marked on this note too. Is they take themselves just serious and they commit just hard enough to make the ridiculousness not seem silly mm-hmm. like he's the one you sent to kill the fucking boogeyman like if he doesn't actually then go out and murk all these people like it's nothing that line seems silly right and like they do a lot of like what would be over the top and kind of like cheesy like him in the shower and him hitting the hammer on the fucking cement and doing all this stuff. But they spend the, like that first portion of the movie, like building him up and they mm-hmm. don't let it down with his ability as a uh, stunt actor, like in the hand to hand combat scenes, he holds his own in the gun scenes. He holds his own. So him training right. those enough to make him look like he actually knows what he's doing. Cause he does kind of know what he's doing is I think what makes this movie believable. Otherwise, it would get into the point of like ridiculousness. Hmm. I'd like to know how he got into the game and then managed to have a wife towards that end. Or did he get the wife as he retired? That's why he got out. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's right, because he said he found a love interest. Yep. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course. It was how did he have time to find a love interest? Maybe You know what? I bet he met her on a job. Mm. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll totally call you. I, I got to go do this thing real quick and then kills 10 people. Yeah. She, she was like, hey, witness. by the way. Uh, also, as a hitman, I mean, I assume you do have downtime. Like, you can't yeah. constantly need someone killed. Yeah, you, you got You've vacation seen his days. gold coins. Yeah. Right, well. you got vacation days, so. Uh, those don't those don't roll over by the way. Earlier Apparently you said not. you had something you want to talk about and roll back to. What was that about? Oh, uh, it's just my point of like wet top wet wet blanket endings. Wet blankets, that's right. Which kind of all rolls together uh, like like you were saying, like it's about the villain. His his target in this movie is uh, Alfie Allen, right? Theon, uh, whatever the kid's name is. Reek. Reek. <laughs> How many other <laughs> names can we call him? Uh, Dickless. <laughs> uh, good man. Not Euro Trash. Uh, Euro Trash is nephew. <laughs> but his whole target is to get the kid. Right. And then he gets the kid, and he's done. Mm-hmm. But then the dad pulls him back in again, and now the ultimate final battle is with the dad. But his beef wasn't with the dad. Right, yeah. So why, why end with the dad? Why not end with the kid? His dad made it his business, I suppose. Right, but but the dad is. It as, I get, as I get the what viewer, they were doing. you had the vendetta with Theon, not yeah. Mm-hmm. Not Our beef is with the kid right. because he killed the yeah. dog. That's why we want him dead. Right. The dad. First off, why the Bonus fuck points. didn't the dad just give the kid over? The kid's a shithead. Mob boss's kids are always shitheads. It's, yeah, it's true. They are never worth it. Two movies in a row where that happens. I would think that's, that's it's a, a, it's a thing. It's they're it's, always it's got to be one of those. It's a just the principle of the matter deal. Like in Russian mob, you know, family and any mob family is a big deal. And it's like, well, you kill my son, I have to now retaliate. But then, rather than I get what they were doing, and I I like and dislike yeah. the kid's death. I like that it's just so sudden and quick. Yeah, because he, that's what he they doesn't get up. a chance to just a fuck and then and then kills him. Right. Like, yeah, fuck you. Because <laughs> he is inevitable. Yes. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's like we don't get to see that final ending. We don't get to see him his face to face. Like, just a fucking dog. But it was my dog. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna give him that justice. They and almost. Then, and then as we're yeah. going down. They even try pulling like a surprise when Willem Dafoe gets pulled in, mm, yeah. and it's like, "Hello, Marcus. Who the fuck is this guy?" And they cut away. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, "We already know who it is. Why yeah. cut away?" But and, I, I'm and, like, with you, you too. Could just, you they, could just let him go, and you're done. He already killed your kid. You're not killing the boogeyman. You know this. And they they kind of swap around the the way it should be almost mm. like the big. I can, see. The, I guess the issue is you can't believably have John and Alfie have a fist fight. 
Because he would crush him. Why? Why we were supposed to be afraid of of Vigo? Uh, like mano a mano. Why? Yeah, I'm kind of with you, but like why? That seems you haven't like been the, established as a physical threat. They like flipped the blow off round though, right? Yeah. Like Vigo should have been the one that he just went up to at the end, of, and mm-hmm. then Alfie should have been like the one. He Maybe he like just beats the shit out. That would have been better. Yeah, like he slowly like lets him know. Didn't yeah, you say this got cut? Yeah, it was, it was supposed, supposed to be a two-hour two movie. And Twenty minutes. I wonder if that's what they wanted to do, but they just had like, nope, we gotta, we gotta cut it. They wanted to subvert the expectation. <sighs> I was, I was avoiding that. <laughs> I know you. were. I was avoiding that. Yeah. But uh, is what it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it, the last fifteen minutes is kind of the weakest part. They actually have, were planning on having that extended, but they're like, mm, and I'm kind of glad yeah. they didn't. Right. Because Cause, cause we're already done at that how? point. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like a fake out ending where, okay, it's done. I thought they were setting up for a sequel, like Vigo called in some other big boss man, mm. and now he's taking care of Marcus, and this is like, see you in part two. Well, I can't remember. Unfortunately, exactly that can't happen because I think the big boss man died in like 2006 or seven. No, no, I mean. Um, 17. No, the big boss man, oh. not Vigo. He's no. a wrestler. That's my one per episode. Also, Kevin Nash was in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Always plays a Russian for some reason. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I had to derail it. Way with that reference took me way <laughs> off. I'm like, what? It. Uh, huh? It's almost like uh, like that should have been the sequel. I'm with you. Like the sequel should have been him because he he clearly does like the the scene where he's smoking the joint while he's killing all the people in and alfie and he you can see on his face he's like well son's dead now i gotta kill john i don't know how to kill john i gotta get john out somewhere to make him come after me wait why didn't uh willem kill john i don't know maybe i'll ask the pretty lady she seems to know somehow and then it's like all these like that's where like the storytelling gets a little too convoluted mm. to make to make the ending be a deal versus I feel like had they have ended it with Alfie and he like they'd give him the phone call and it just ends with him finishing his joint like credits mm-hmm. and then the part two is it would have been a good pickup right yeah mm. even if they would have started part two with just that fight to kill him and then moving on to something else would have been okay because I mean then they would have picked up the story mm-hmm. with something else right because I remember the beginning of part two being kind of weak because I was I just don't like why remember, are, honestly, it's been I was like why minute. are we here and like it, the story then picks up but I just, it was weird at the beginning because it's like what's happening like I think he's cleaning up the rest of the Russian mob or something I don't remember I just remember a coin and some blood mm-hmm. but um, I also wanted to throw out some interesting facts really quick. I don't know if you guys knew about this, probably, because you've heard of the book Lone Survivor, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, it is a U.S. Navy SEAL, Marcus Luttrell. Apparently, this story is loosely based around that, or inspired by. Um, what had happened was mm-hmm. he came back from Afghanistan in 2005. He was given a, a, le, a, a, yellow Labrador pu- a yellow Labrador puppy, who's named Daisy. And then after the members of his um, fire team which I guess they were called Daisy. Um, around one in the morning, he was wakened by a gunshot and some men, four men drove away, found his dog dead, dead in his yard. He armed himself with two Beretta pistols and then chased the man through four counties in his truck until police apprehended them. And they taunted Latrell, threatening to kill him and indicated no remorse for their actions. They were later sentenced for animal cruelty. And then he later stated, I spared them because I've killed enough people already. So you're saying he didn't take his beretta and put a bunch of holes in the sweater yeah no unfortunately dang it so i was just like that's that uh, okay I something like that actually happened if he actually just took out a russian mafia crew <laughs> yeah just like real life isn't butters. that exciting unfortunately yeah. and if it is you're not going to hear about it speaking of killing motherfuckers there's 77 people that john wick kills with a total body count of 119 dang yeah I don't know if that's... No, I don't think it is. Because James Bond had a high body count. I think the highest was in Goldeneye. But then again... Pierce Brosnan gets shit done, He does. Dude. He, he fucking ain't messing around. He was the one with the most kills out of all the different James Bonds. That's why Bonds. he's the best James Bond and also kind of the worst James Bond. <laughs> I agree. Uh, this movie yeah. also does a boss move of starting at the end. I always appreciate when movies do that and pull it off. It starts with him at the very end after the main fight, and then mm. you go back to see how he got to that point. I think yeah. it's a good way to 
kind of grab everyone's attention like right off the bat. Isn't that kind of what uh, Guy Ritchie films do? Or uh, a bunch of other Or at least a few of his films did. I always liked him because there's all the events that are happening and you Mm -hmm. finally get to see where they all coalesce. Yeah. What do they call those? uh... I don't remember. Fuck it. Continue on. He steals someone's dog. Yeah, he does. He straight up steals a man's dog from that well, place. I mean, does he? I thought it that was could a have been a shelter. I thought it was a shelter. Was a I mean, that looks like a vet like clinic. I mean, there are vets there. Shelters would have veterinarian stuff to keep their dogs healthy. That makes sense. That's what. That ideally. dog didn't look abandoned. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think he had a collar it was, on. It was kind of skinny. <laughs> that dog was skinny as fuck. Dog had a collar on. That's someone's dog. John is a man of principle. <laughs> I wish. I wish the sequel. <laughs> Who's gonna tell us? No. Someone else. Coming after John Wick because they took his, his dog. fucking dog. Yeah. Then watch it be the shortest sequel ever. <laughs> you took my dog. No, I didn't. Bang. <laughs> Come and take him back. I dare you. <laughs> you can have him. You're going to live with me now. <laughs> We're going home. Uh, adoption. So I also want to throw a shout out to some of the like other MVPs that aren't MVPs. Uh, the soundtrack in this movie also is super good. Like it's it's somehow pulls off the generic rock soundtrack, mm-hmm. but like mixes it with EDM. I think it's because he's got that muscle car. Yeah, throwing them that does some roots. It's everything just synergy. Yeah, synergy. I feel like though the Rhymes, reason like poetry. I could be wrong, but a man has a muscle car. He's grounded in his old ways in his in a sense, and he likes to stick it. You know, stick that way, which is maybe why he doesn't have a high security system. He just trusts his gun under his pillow. Yeah. Valid. His dog would be alive if he had like ADT or something. He was grieving. And retired. <laughs> Didn't you hear that's he was vulnerable? More, that's even that's right. more reason to have a goddamn security <laughs> system, okay? My wife died. I need a security system. <laughs> I would just think I would I would just at his think, wake the ADT <laughs> representative is there like ah, sorry, sorry for, for your loss. loss. <laughs> Give us a call sometime. Yeah. We're there. I'm when just you need saying us. If if I had a high body count and I was a retired hitman, I'd probably have a few cameras, yeah, a few floodlights, some some alarm systems. I mean, the cops did right? have a good response time, other than him having to kill them all first before they showed yeah. up. They but. didn't. They didn't help him with dog. No. They didn't show up. No, there's no gun gun fired. No one reported the loud noises. I think another thing too that I, they're not. Does he too, not lock his doors? They don't go into. Uh, like they don't fully disclose this, but it seems like there obviously are a lot of rules within the assassin world. Like you don't do business at the Continental. I'm wondering if they respect the if you can get out, you're out, and then the, no retaliation. I mean, oh, the hitmen awesome. would, but with the other other mafia families, probably not. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's so hard to get out that you have to do an impossible task. That I think they might respect if you get out. Like I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. I'm just, I'm just Go saying. Ahead. John Wick is. Super badass. He's the Baba Yaga, mm-hmm. and and he gets taken out with an aluminum bat. He's grieving. He's vulnerable. He's vulnerable. He gets taken out <laughs> with a baseball bat. Okay. Now also, we're we we're, we're, we got to give him some credit. This is the second movie that Keanu Reeves goes to a neutral grounds nightclub slash hotel because he did that in Constantine. That's right. That's why it sounds so familiar. Valid. I've seen I've seen that trope in so many places. I know it. Immediately it's an interesting what it kind is. of concept, though. I like it though with the mm-hmm. whole assassin world because then you have like, is everybody in this hotel an assassin or are they just some sort of underground person? It is my Ooh. probably the the coolest part of the movie to me is the Continental and that lore, mm-hmm. and I can't wait for the TV show now. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, mm-hmm. I, what, have they had any updates on that? Do you know any idea? No. no. But in the second movie, they go more into like mm-hmm. that world and how it operates, which I liked. Yeah. Word life. Point. Yep. What else you got? Um, Any other uh, points of discussion and or authority? Fucking Allstate guy doesn't have a gun with him. Works for the mob boss, doesn't carry a gun. Does anyone have a gun? I was thinking about that. Does anyone have a gun? When you you brought that up while we were watching it. So, I think it's one of two things. A, he is not a muscle man kind of guy. And so he figures if he doesn't have a gun, they can't then ask him to do it. It's another crony's job. Like he's ascended past that part. Or B, what I think is going on is, he, yeah, right? <laughs> I was on purpose. Don't worry. He uh, he is the only person that you regularly see with Vigo by himself. Hmm. So Vigo might have a mandate where he cannot carry a gun because he's going to be alone with him and he doesn't want to get popped and then have him secede his position. He was also in charge of his security detail. 
Because he was like, put together a team. Mm-hmm. Right. Who, how many? All of them. Uh, see, I think he's just his his right hand, basically. Like he's he's his PA, basically. The boogeyman's coming after you. Yeah. You're not packing heat. Mm-hmm. This is why we need a Second Amendment. You like I feel like I feel like man, he, would you? He's not yeah. just the. I don't think he's head of security. I think he's like telling head of security what to do. He's handling finances. He's like. Yeah. He's doing all of that kind of shit so that Boba Yaga, or not Boba Yaga, Vigo can worry about Boba Yaga. Mm. Also, he's clearly never fired a gun before. Yeah. yeah. One <laughs> shot. Ha ha! These are that fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was trying to kill him. Whoops. <laughs> uh, but you see, uh, if you had just gone with a better insurance firm, <laughs> you wouldn't be paying for this yourself. <laughs> You'd be better protected from mayhem, like him. That, yeah. That's the best I could I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the only thing I came up with. Nation writings on your side. <laughs> Not sponsored. You are in good hands. Right. Uh, Did we get them all? Oh, yeah. You could save 15% or more by switching your car insurance to Geico. Mm-hmm. There we go. Now I think we hit all of them. Uh, name, name your price tool. Flo. Hey, I used to have a huge crush on her. I mean, she used to be kind of hot. Anything else? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, uh, that's uh, all. My John stuff. Wick totally breaks the law by pumping his own gas. Are they in Jersey? Yes. Did we? Did we? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's I how that up just to make sure. That's how well people know him. <laughs> they also, him whipping the Yui, whipping a shitty Yui. right in the middle of the intersection. I believe the, people in his home. The, the technical term in Jersey is flipping a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it. This, this feels like it's based on something, but it's not. Mm. I get the feeling with that with, like, uh, Kingsman. He just said it was kind of based on... Uh, no, I, I mean, I mean like, oh. it, like it's based off a graphic novel oh, I see what you're or, yeah. or a pre-established story, it does kind but of it's have that. not. It's got that aesthetic, doesn't it? They have a, a, a graphic novel that's coming out, or that two of them are out so far. No? I don't Never. know. Possibly. I don't know. I just mean, I it feels like it. it's based off some John Wick vs. Batman? I'd watch. Ooh. I mean... They, Read? Yeah. Well, yeah, I... Yeah. I don't know if that could happen though. John Wick is Batman. Batman doesn't kill. John Wick does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then no one wants to see Batman dead. It's gonna be one of those twist endings where they decide to join sides. So we've been mm-hmm. sucking this movie dick hard, right? Mm-hmm. Like swallowed the shaft, gravy, the whole Ball thing steak. that they talk Ball. about in Tropic Thunder, right? <laughs> is there anything in this movie like you've mentioned a couple things you, <laughs> you don't like? like. <laughs> is there anything particularly in this movie that you weren't like? Even if it's a nitpick that you're like, nah, I don't know about that. Like, what would if you could change anything? What would you change other than the? Why ending? does it have to be a Russian mob? Like, are they just because they're just known for being mafioso? Mm. Well, you see, you see, I mean, Western media time. goes in cycles. <laughs> Back in the day, it was you know vaguely German was mm-hmm. the bad guy. Then it was vaguely Russian mm-hmm. was the bad guy. Now it's it was vaguely. Uh, Middle Eastern were the bad guys for a long time. We're kind of going back towards Russia mm-hmm. right now. Like, couldn't they we, we be ebb like, and flow. Like, like Irish, like an Irish mob Cause or something. Because they don't, don't exist anymore. Uh, you ever seen Gangs Unless of New York? Go, yeah. Yeah, a yeah, long time ago. I Been mean, a hot minute. if they did it that way, they would have to relocate the entire shoot to Ireland. Because <laughs> they're kind of busy with that IRA situation going on. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I would uh, Bubba, get yeah. rid of the fucking lens flares. Would be the first thing I would take out, just but it, but it getting really, out this movie, really out this movie, right? <laughs> uh, and then uh, the floating subtitles, right? I like them, but I don't like that at the beginning they're just standard subtitles. Mm. I think they should have done the floating subtitle the entire time. Stick with stylized subtitles, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those are the only two gripes that I really had. Makes it have that more of that comic book feel, yeah, right? When you mentioned got, graphic got novel, that's where I was thinking. Yeah. Mm. Should we hit that wrap up? Yeah. Uh, what the fuck moment? The when he kills moment. the dog. Yep, yep, when he kills the dog. The dog kill moment. It's the only one I could think of because Jesus. How dare. Yep. Cool. Yep. And you know what almost makes it worse? That it's just in the background and blurry and you just hear a yelp. Mm-hmm. And, and then, and then, oh, be still my heart. <laughs> when it comes, when he wakes up, you just see the blood trail that the dog crawled its way back over to him and then died. And I was like, oh. you son of a bitch. Not gonna mm-hmm. lie. I teared up at that moment. If it- I had, I had to dry my eyes. I knew it was coming. I'm like, it's like oh, I mean, buddy. if I was even a henchman, I would have just been like, okay, dog, bye. Let me deal with your dad. You know, I, I have at least that shred of more the, mo- the, morality. The other henchman that is that plays Wesley in uh, Daredevil, instead of 
have an Alpha go kick him. He should have stopped him and then walked outside with the dog and be like, shush, 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 okay. But then I guess <laughs> we don't see the movie. We're taking you little yeah. buddy. Yeah. He's got to have some sort of motivation. I mean, if his dog would have just ran away. What if, oh, what if instead of the dead dog, they kidnapped the dog and he's like, I'm getting my dog and my car back. I don't know and then at the are. end, he gets all the face kisses. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of face kisses, they put bacon grease on his face for him to lick him in the morning. That I makes like, sense. Hey. Uh, because a puppy can't be trained that early. Lance, do you have anything else besides that moment for your what the fuck? Uh, no, that yeah, was the only that's thing. That's the only proper moment you can choose. Uh, spoilers, all my things revolve around dogs. Dogs. <laughs> uh, then I guess, what is your favorite scene? You know, the montage scene. My well, yeah, I scene. knew yours already. <laughs> <laughs> it's when he's talking about him. Did you, you see even him. have to? Which I, montage? The montage of the cancer? No. <laughs> the montage of the burying the dog? No. Okay, so the montage, montage where he's talking about Bobby Egg and he's hitting the sledgehammer, right? No, he's just suiting up, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And as you can probably predict if we did John Wick 2, what my other montage favorite I don't remember moment. the montage from that one, honestly. He's suiting up. He's uh, after he buys suit. from Peter Serafuna, what's <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. What do you got? Mm. Uh, my favorite scene is when he's walking the new dog home. The dog's like pulling him, like going over. He's just limping along. Like, he's like, oh, I have oh, stabbed oh. everything in my left side. Stop <laughs> pulling. You're really going to tear my colon. I will get a new dog right quick. <laughs> I'll take you back. I will take you back. You will get no ice cream. Uh, oh, yeah. Holy That's fuck. my favorite. Mm, I think I got to go with the... Uh, mm, it's a tough one because I like a lot of it, but I think it's the club scene where he just fucking waylays people. Ooh. Just the lighting is cool. The music's awesome. He's just going... <laughs> And then he gets chucked off the fucking balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Dropped like a fucking... Shout oof. out shout out to that henchman. He was the only person that stopped him somewhat twice. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else just got wrecked. I will mm-hmm. say that was my sub-favorite scene. Like, I'm mm-hmm. my second best. Just the, the, the gun kata. Just, oof. Yep. So, I did appreciate so his fight scene with uh, the girl in the hotel room, though. With some solid, uh, solid jujitsu. Mm-hmm. When she's when she's hitting him by the stitches. Oh. She's like... You know what? You know what, though? You know, that backfired because John Wick is actually a Sith, and they grow stronger with pain and anger. (laughs) Come at me, Kylo Ren. (laughs) Real quick, to the whole uh, chair scene, when he's like, you can give me your son or die screaming with him. Mm. He had no escape plan. No. He had no plan. He was just bluffing, and then they, they start choking him out. If it wasn't for fucking Green Goblin, mm-hmm. he would not have been out of that one. That would have been a short film. Yeah. Well, oh, sure. I'm the boogeyman, and you're dead. <laughs> so. I wonder, I mean, He'd have figured it out. Just bite through the bag? He'd have figured it out. He had nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been sacked. Uh, yeah. MVP? Oh. oh well, Wait. Uh, did we get your favorite scene? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, montage. 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 Oh, yeah, duh. We need a so, montage. So, uh, my favorite scene, there's a lot that I wrote about this. Obviously, it is Keanu Reeves... Yet again, I believe I picked him when we watched Hardball. Hardball was it? This is is this our third one for. It is our third. Oh, our I think one. he's our new uh, leader. Yeah, he's this has a lot of fucking connections to our other movies. Do you know how too. old Keanu Reeves is right now? Fifty-two. Fifty-five. Yeah. As a he's, man, and he's actor, an immortal though. This he man is a vampire. He has a real. heart of gold, and I have listed some of the things he did. But one thing in particular, what made me his MVP for this film in particular, was when they were doing the nightclub fight scene. He memorized the fight sequences the day the scene was filmed, all while he had the flu, mm. running 104 degree fever. Mm. Committed much? Mm. Um, not only shout that, out but, to the Reddit Keanu being awesome because it's his life. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Um, not only that, but just things he's done in previous films. So. Basically, MVP Keanu Reeves as the man. Not necessarily the actor, but mm-hmm. just him as a whole. Um, I put down some things. If you guys didn't already know and did your counter research and you're not a big fan of him, fuck you. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, he sticks with his good guy morals. He does everything just because it's for the love of it. He basically turned down a huge paycheck to do Speed 2 because he wanted to tour with the band he was playing at the time and start in a production of Hamlet. Or when he made The Devil's Advocate, he agreed to take a big pay cut of a few million dollars so the producers could then afford to bring in Al Pacino. Mm. Plus, he probably wanted to work with Al Pacino. Right. And then he did the same thing again in The Replacements, allowing producers to bring on Gene Ackman and demanding less pay up front for himself and took a 90% pay cut Mm. just so he could work with better people. He is the perfect person. (laughs) 
And then there is also what you guys have probably heard if you've seen The Matrix. He took the uh, proceeds, um, what was it? He, he made about seven, or he donated $75 million basically to the people who worked with the film because he thought they deserved it. Mm-hmm. And then he also gave each member um, Harley Davison's. And then just because he's also a good guy, uh, he gave 80 million of his 114 million earnings to his work on the Matrix sequel to the special effects and makeup. Dang. Like, he's like, yeah, pay me millions, but y'all gonna get it back mm-hmm. anyway. I just good like guy doing, Keanu. You yep. know. And I read somewhere that Four Still rides the subway too. Four Chan supposedly had thought that he had been so sad and upset about certain things they had started a big charitable donation to him. But he wanted all the money to go towards his foundations that we was a part of, and so. Yeah, that man just was. You know, he's mm. like, I'm not really sad. I just, you know, he had a, a lot of shit going on. A plus player in life. <laughs> yeah, he was dealt a shitty hand later on. Uh, his his daughter had a, or his wife had a stillbirth, and then four years later, I think his daughter, his wife died. Jeez. So <laughs> Way to maybe that's why he really plays that beginning part so well. Right. Yeah. Very relatable. So that's my uh, sucking Keanu Reeves dick moment there. Mm-hmm. Good guy. Work the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Play with the balls. You got a couple. Who you got? Give him, give him a little love. Uh, Who's Daisy. balls you cup in this? Daisy. Movie? Was Daisy. Daisy the name of his dog? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking, like, while we were watching, I was like, I don't know if I ever catch the name of that dog. I assume with the, the Daisy on the car and the Daisy on the Well, he's, he says collar, Daisy. But yeah, I guess I didn't. Yeah, and it just always flies Because his head. wife loved the flower Daisy. Aww. It was on a mug? It was on a picture? No, that was a nipple, I told you. <laughs> oh, yeah? I mean, it was on her mug. <laughs> It was on her mug. He loves the nipples, so that's why he has it on his mug. But, uh, yeah, just a cute little doggy. You can't, yeah. The second he's like, you're on the floor, I'm like, dog's not staying on the floor. You stop that. You're, put, you're putting that dog in your bed. You have a you bed to yourself. Dog in your like, bed. Come like, on. All right, come on. Get up. You're like, damn right. Um, maybe <laughs> damn he doesn't right. want the dog up there because he's sleeping on his side, and that only leaves his wife's side, who is only the person that will be in that bed forever. <laughs> Who's replacing his wife? Well, that even dog. even when they, like, he's ain't fucking that dog. All right, he's too <laughs> wholesome for that. The uh, the scene where he's in the the hotel, he still sleeps on the same side, and they have like the wide angle, so you see the empty slot. Of, That's true. Yeah, I noticed that. Hmm. Sad. Rip. Mm-hmm. MVP mm-hmm. Uh, choreography. Yes. Blew my fucking mind when I saw this movie for the first time. I was like, these he fucking went for it. And then you he see did. all the behind the scenes of him training, going through like. That dude, fuck it, he, he can do it. <laughs> like, it's nuts. I read a bunch of, it was 101 facts, or maybe it was just 50 facts about Keanu Reeves, and a lot of the stuff was talking about his own choreography and how mm-hmm. he's already been trained in this, or yep. how he'll go, you know, above and beyond. He played 90% of those fight scenes. Mm-hmm. He is, everyone always, uh, you know, big ups Tom Cruise for doing his own stunts and more power to him. I fucking hate Tom Cruise. <laughs> and that's the only part of that I do respect is that he does his own stunts, but... I think Keanu is is the, obviously the right I would prefer because he also does a shit ton of his own stunts, but I also like him. He's 50 years old and he's doing all that shit. Tom Cruise is also 50 it's years old. It's just insane. Yeah, the, Jackie Chan does his own go. stuff. Hell yeah. And I love Jackie. <laughs> it's just sad to start seeing Jackie yeah. get old. Yeah. Well, See, all, all of our watched. heroes are dying. Then we watched The Foreigner and I, yeah. I remember being real upset because I was like, this is going to be his John Wick. He's going to fuck it. Nope. Yeah. No. Don't watch. Yeah. It's one with uh, Pierce Brosnan, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Irish mob. There you go. Uh, but the choreography, I do think, takes the dip as the the movies, the sequel comes out. Not necessarily in the hand to hand combat. I think that's still so solid. But the gunplay gets a little fucking over the top. Like him and Commons fight scene. It's just <laughs> pew, pew, it's pew, funny, pew, but pew, it's pew, it's kind of at that point I was like, okay, my my uh, my suspension of disbelief. Has lost. <laughs> like, Without spoiling it, you should watch it. Yeah, yeah man, I'm going to. Yeah. When we gotta figure out when we're gonna see. Maybe tomorrow. Comes Possibly. out the seventeenth, right? It, it comes out tomorrow. They start showings tomorrow. Technically says Friday seventeenth, but I mean Tomorrow's everything. The sixteenth. Right, but they have showings at seven and ten. So for that the it's midnight like midnight. Release. Yeah. It's oh. like probably ends by midnight. That's a whole different fucking rant. Kids yeah. these days. Mm. Downloading games mm. the night before. Yeah. And- being released Midnight four or five releases. hours. God damn, so that was John Wick. Yeah. That's uh, been 47 episodes in the making, because I think that was one of our first options, too, was we were going to do John Wick, because fucking love that John Wick. Mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm, good. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Glad I watched it. Yeah. Uh, so as far as audio engagement, uh, audio, audience engagement, I have... Uh, yeah, so that's John Wick, folks. Thanks for sticking around. If you haven't seen the third movie, 
Are you going to see the third movie? Obviously, you haven't yet because this movie came out. But if it comes, if it's out right now, when this this should come out when we post this out, you know, I'm gonna blow your mind. That. They can watch this literally at any I point, know. so it could already be out. You should watch. You should it. go buy it on DVD and VHS. <laughs> We're all compact discs are sold. <laughs> laser discs, Blu-ray. Um, boy, um, howdy! What is our next one? Uh, we'll laser, watch? laser disc. Um, it is I'm, your choice, I'm right? Feeling Kingsman because you did mm-hmm. Eastern Prayer. Yep. Kingsman? Yes, Kings, kind of feeling good. Just because it's that, it's kind of what I was thinking of. One or two? Uh, one. Okay. You can't, you can't skip right Is that the ass two. one? You can't skip. Don't spoil it. I'm just asking. It's just, it's, yes. it's an out of context. Yes. Not spoiler. Okay. Just making sure. Yes. <laughs> you can't just skip. Okay. Like, what do you think this is? Evil Dead 2? Yeah. God. <laughs> Bloodfest? God. What? I mean, they had that other film that was made before it, didn't they? Well, that was that wasn't in the same vein. <laughs> Are we done? Been. Are we done? I've never seen Kingsman. You've really? never seen Kingsman? Yeah, I'm so super excited. Still has no idea. There what we go. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I was just sitting there like, I don't know what this ass thing is. I assume it's about Captain America. <laughs> That's America's ass. It is America's ass. That's a Sunday. A strawberry or a banana split. <laughs> Flame Everyone on. who's watched Avengers and has not seen not another teen movie, <laughs> Jordy, <laughs> watch that shit. Woo! Cool. Mm. Hell yeah, mm. that was a good, good, good one, brothers. Teamwork. Yeah, it makes a dream work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I gotta piss. <laughs>